This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning how we can create custom exceptions properly in Python. So let's get started immediately by creating our very first custom exception. And before we do that, I'm just going to import from the typing module, the any type, since I like to use type annotations. Then we can create a class, which is going to be called hardware error. And this is going to be our custom exception. And to turn this into a custom exception, we're going to have to inherit from the exception class. And this is the common base class for all non exit exceptions. Anyway, this hardware error is an exception that handles all hardware related errors. And we wanted to make this custom. So next, what we have to do is create an initializer, which will return none. And this will take a message, which will be the error message of type string and a value of type any. Now this part is not required, but I just like to do it because it's nice to have some sort of value associated with the error sometimes. But next we need to use the super call to call the original initializer of the exception. And inside here, that requires a message. Then we can type in self.message is equal to message and self.value is equal to value. So we can associate those values with this instance of the error. Finally, let's tell this class what to do when we want to display the error or when we want to print our error. So here we're going to add the string dunder method. I guess I have to type in definition first, which will return a string. And here we will return the f string of self.message and the value of self.value. And just like that, we've created our very first custom exception. So next, let's try to use it in an example. For example, we might have some sort of overheat exception. So I'm just going to create a variable from that. And that's going to be of type hardware error. Then here we can create that exception. And it's going to contain the message of computer overheated. And it's going to have a value of 137. So we can pretend that's 137 Celsius. So our computer is starting to melt. But now if we were to print this overheat exception, what you should notice in the console is this custom message that the computer overheated and that we have a value of 137. If you were to print the representation of our overheat exception, we're going to get the actual hardware error with the string of computer overheated. And if we were to duplicate that line two more times, change this to overheat exception, we can also retrieve the message and the value manually. So value. And you'll notice that we will get both of those values back from our exception. So that's a lot of the information regarding the exception, but let's actually see it being used in a try and accept block. So here we can try to raise a hardware error and we will type in that laptop is too hot and we'll add maybe 101 degrees as the value, then we can accept the hardware error as E. So we can get the information back from it. And all we're going to do here is print E. So now we're forcefully raising this error in the try block, which means we're bound to catch it in the accept block. And if we were to run this, you'll see that we're going to get our string message back when we print E. And we can also print E dot message and E dot value. And that's going to give us back the value and the message. So now it works like a normal error, but there's still one last thing we need to do before we're done with this hardware error, because right now it's great and all, but it is not pickleable. So what we need to do next is import pickle, because first I'm going to show you that it's not pickleable, and then we're going to fix that. So now again, we're going to create our overheat exception. And this time I'm just going to abbreviate it to OE, which will be of type hardware error. And that's going to equal the hardware error once again, and we'll type in laptop is too hot with the value set to 101. Next, I'm going to create a variable called pickled, which will be of type bytes, and that's going to equal pickle.dumps, and we're going to pass in the overheat exception, which is just a hardware error. And immediately under that, we're going to type in unpickled, which will be of type hardware error, because now we're trying to extract the information from the object that we just pickled. So here we can type in pickle.loads and try to unpickle the pickled object. And then to see that everything actually worked, we want to print the representation of unpickled, 
because if everything went well, we should have the original hardware error. And we should, I keep on doing that wrong. How did I end up with print print representation? Today's a crazy day. Anyway, we also want to print unpickled dot value and unpickled dot message, just to make sure we got everything back. Anyway, right now, if we were to run this, we're going to get a type error because we're missing one value in the initializer for our hardware error. And this is actually because we're missing instructions on how to pickle our hardware error, which means it's not pickling it properly. It's actually not even passing in all the arguments to our pickle service. Right now, when we dump our hardware error, it's only passing in the first argument, which is the message. Because as you noticed earlier, if we were to print the representation of our overheat exception, what we're going to get back is this without the value. And this is terrible because when we try to pickle that object, this is all that's going in. And we need all the arguments. We need both the message and the value. So to make sure that we can pickle all of those arguments, we're going to have to add another Dunder method. And this one's called reduce. And that's going to make sure that when we try to pickle our object, all the arguments are going to be used. And this is going to return to us a tuple of type any, with another tuple of string to any. So the first tuple is containing the class and the second tuple is containing the arguments. And the first argument is a string. So here we have a string and the second argument is any. So here we put any. And what we're going to do here is return self dot dunder class. That is the class name. That's going to give us back the class name and the arguments. So self.message and self.value. So we're returning exactly what you see here. And once again, this makes sure that we get all the arguments put back into the class instead of just getting self.message. And just to show you what this actually contains now, I'm going to remove all of this real quickly and print our overheat exception. And also I'm going to change the string dunder method to that information just so you can see what it actually contains now. Now, when we run it, what we're going to get back is the class as the first element in the tuple. And the second element is going to be a tuple of the arguments that are going to be used to construct this class once again, when we unpickle that pickled object. But let's go back to what we had earlier, because now what you're going to notice is that with reduce, we can actually pickle our object and it's going to work properly. The representation is still going to be the same. It's not going to give us the value in the representation, but once we unpickle it, it's still going to contain the value and the message because we told Python exactly what to do when we want to pickle one of our custom exceptions, all thanks to the reduce Dunder method. But yeah, that just about covers everything I wanted to go over in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have further questions regarding custom exceptions. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.